Hey YouTube, so let's have a look at the garden. Here we go. First of all, the chive bed. Now, uh, what happens every year with them is we let them run to seed and the seeds spread and you end up with a bed that looks from a distance like grass but is in fact not. It's chives. Um, we also have Pentland Javelin Potatoes, 16 of them, their first earlies, and over the top of them we are growing some radishes. I think you might just be able to see some radish seedlings. In fact, there's one. There we go. And uh, what happens is the radishes are taking up the top part of the soil, the potatoes are taking up a much lower part of the soil. The radishes will be out before the potatoes even get big. It's called catch cropping. Here we have onions all the way up the side of the path and on the other side as well. There's Stuttgart and Red Baron. Stuttgart is quite a mild flavour of onion. Red Baron stronger and as the name suggests, red. We've got some spring onions and leeks that I put too close together last year. They didn't grow properly, so we left them in um, to grow on a bit in spring. Apple trees. We have two of them. Granny Smiths. And they produced quite a bit last year, and they've been pruned very hard this year. So, therefore, uh, they should hopefully produce again. Everywhere you see a cane, that's where we're growing broad bean plants, broad bean aqua dolce. Um, not a massive fan of broad beans, but you know they fill up the plot and they're very nice actually. Catch cropping again, because in between them we have lettuce seedlings coming through. Um, well actually I'm not sure if they're lettuce seedlings, but we've sown them there anyway. Here we have the peas. Uh, down here we've got uh, early onward, a row of them. A row of Hurst green shaft there, and in the middle we've got a mixture of the two. Early onward, as the name suggests, is pretty much the earliest you can get. Hurst green shaft, one of the later, slightly sweeter, I think, uh, summer peas. And if I zoom in down here, you'll see that we have um, one or two pea seedlings coming through. Not as much as you would expect for this time of year because we have had more cold and more frost than usual um, and the chances are they may have been frozen in the ground but, you know, they'll come through I'm sure. Perpetual spinach there. It's not true spinach, it's perpetual spinach. It's actually related to beetroot it puts more production into the leaf and none into the root um, and uh, you can cut them and come again so if I twist them off at any point they will uh, grow back and with the chives they ran to seed last year um, uh, you know like the chives did the seeds blew everywhere and that's how many we've ended up with down there by the shed as well over here, the crocuses, there we are, and the rhubarb. This is the best of the two rhubarb plants we've got at the moment. It's growing pretty well and we should have some stalks off it, um, probably by the end of the month actually. And that is also related to the beetroot. That, that puts um, more production into its stalks and its leaves, um, its leaves even, as you can tell, but of course the leaves are poisonous. Strawberries, if you ever get to February and find that your strawberry plants are dying off or whatever, don't worry because by April they look like this. More onions there by the fence, although you can't really see them. They are growing through, they were put planted I suppose in mid February, which 
show you what one of them looks up. Looks like close up. There we are. That's obviously a red barren one. Around here, where it's been uh, recently watered, we have another load of onions there. And next to that we have two rows of parsnip, tender and true. A row of carrots. A row of beetroot split into three different varieties. Solyndra, Detroit 2 Crimson Globe and Detroit 2 Bolivar. Now that's because I had those varieties in the seed box. And I didn't want to do three different rows because I don't like beetroot that much. So there we go. And the last row there is turnip. Purple top Milan. Just to show you the other rhubarb plant. And this is the, this is the difference the sun makes. Because you can see this rhubarb is in a sheltered position and it's not quite as good at the moment but I find that sometimes that plant produces sweeter rhubarb as well so there we go that is the garden in April 2013 bye